Well, I, I think it's important to note that we, we completely handle the, the conference schedule. We, we schedule that from soup to nuts. Uh, 90 league games, each, each institution has uh, nine home games. So uh, what we try to do there is bring as much balance and fairness and equity to, to it as we can working within the constraints of civic buildings that might not have universal availability like they do on campus and uh, you know trying to, uh, to balance home Saturdays to prevent mirror games as we call them Bradley at Creighton, Creighton at Bradley, keeping those pairs of games apart and really trying to, to build the schedules so that they all start with one out of the first two at home, one out of the final two at home and, and that kind of thing. In terms of non-conference scheduling uh, we instigate, we, we network with other conferences trying to create opportunities. Uh, we tried to build relationships with, with tournament promoters and we encourage our schools to get involved very much in the, in the multi-team events, the early season tournaments like the Old Spice and, and Turk Classic in, in uh, Orlando. There are, there are many, many of those tournaments and the better the tournament you play in, the more the opportunity you have to, to knock off a top 25 or a top 50 team. Well, the multi-team event, uh, there, are, there are some commitments that our schools have made. Uh, the multi-team event, previously known as an exempted tournament, um, is, is an opportunity that all of our schools have, obviously, to go on the road and play on a neutral site, high major teams. Um, there, there is a waiver process whereas, where, whereby a team doesn't have to play in one of those multi-team events if their non-conference schedule is sufficiently strong. But for the most part, we're finding uh, for this coming year, every team but one is in a multi-team event. And I think you're going to see every one of our teams in multi-team events in the future, just simply because you get more bang for the buck. You can get four games for the, the price of one, so to speak. You can play one non-conference game or you can play in a multi-team event and expand that into three or four opportunities. So I think you're going to see our, our schools generally getting in those, those good tournaments. Well, I think um, primarily our focus has been on, on trying to get our men's and women's basketball back to a point where they can command multiple bids in the NCAA tournament. Uh, we've been nine years away from multiple bids in women's basketball. Uh, in men's basketball, it's been four seasons, five years ago, that we last earned multiple bids. And, and I think that's our biggest challenge. Uh, tied to that, more teams in the tournament, more wins in the NCAA tournament are our revenues. 75% of Missouri Valley Conference revenues come from the NCAA basketball pool distribution. Money that comes through the NCAA from the Turner CBS uh, telecast agreement uh, that's, that is distributed based on the amount of success conferences have in the previous six years of the NCAA tournament. That's based on the number of games in which you play in the NCAA tournament uh, times a certain particular value uh, equals your distribution in a given year and uh, unless we can uh, in the next couple of years have more teams in the tournament or have teams win more games in the tournament uh, we're going to be tightening our belts in here even more than we have been. Well we haven't. We haven't had those plans. That It hasn't been a front burner discussion in any of our meetings expanding or focusing on teams that we might take into our membership. We have refined the process by which we would take a new member into our league. What fees would be assessed, what kind of equity buy-in there would be in our league. And certainly we're going to monitor very closely uh, the, the landscape in, in Division I. We, we do feel very strongly from what we read and what we hear that there will be realignment at the highest levels of Division I. That usually creates a domino effect and a top-down movement and uh, we're not susceptible to, to losing members. We know that all of our member institutions are likely going to be assessing their position in the Missouri Valley. They would always leave with our good graces if, if, uh, if, if they had a better opportunity. And I think the, the beauty of our league, we've been stable since Northern Iowa joined our league, Evansville, excuse me, joined our league in the mid-90s. And uh, I, I think that the strength of our league is that we're, we're great basketball league. Um, there, there's no football tug at our membership. And, and I think that uh, I think they need each other, but I do think we always keep open uh, the notion that if we can find the right institutions that would be a great fit in our league, I don't think our president's council would hesitate in going to 12 members.
Well, good question. Uh, our ESPN and Fox Sports Net contracts just ended you know, at the end of this past academic year. We are in the process of renegotiating our agreements with both of those networks and we are very, very close. We have, a, we have an agreement in principle. We think that within the next four to six weeks we, we will be in a position to finalize those agreements and announce the terms of our new uh, Fox and, and ESPN agreements and uh, we're excited about the, the future. There's a, the, a rapidly changing landscape in television, college sports television. And I think the Missouri Valley really stands to benefit from increased distribution of our games and, and production of more games for regional and national uh, networks.